Hi, Suzanne. Welcome to the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast. Yay, <laughs> Elizabeth, how are you? We're back, I feel like we should say. So you have a very interesting um, spot because you are my first repeat guest. Woohoo! I know. Wow. I'm honored. That's like that's like a big thing. Well, it's 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 exciting, and you're also one of my favorite people in this space. If I'm okay. if I'm being honest, so um, some of you who are listening, uh, we have a carepreneurs group that Suzanne's a part of, that I'm a part of, um, and some other folks, uh, Deb Hallisey, who's been on the podcast, Teresa Wilbanks, and Jessica Sima. So we all share caregiving ideas because we believe in a mindset of abundance and and helping family caregivers through this journey together. So we're stronger together. And um, so Suzanne, yes, but, and I, I do, it is a good spot to be in, to come on to the second time. I, I get a lot of inquiries, inquiries on the podcast and I used to feel pressured to put them on in the order that people wanted, wanted me to put them on. And I thought, no, it's a little bit more of an art than that. It's like, it's, it's, it's about, you know, what's, what's feeding me right now. It's about having some diversity and inclusion on the podcast, making sure that we spotlight different kinds of guests. You know, I'm not just a dementia podcast. I'm not just a, you know, a podcast for spouses or people caring mm -hmm. for kids. We're, we're, we're an all inclusive caregiving podcast here. So, um, <laughs> which i love you know yes. and, and, you, and it's great because you do that because you know you have and, and i mean every top look every topic we talk about in caregiving is like important to, to many people out there not just one person so but i i love the different you know topics that you cover because it's it feels like this endless pool of questions you know like oh my gosh and that's the whole thing that's why you and i always got along so well is like i remember like i was always saying like nobody tells you this like, Nobody tells you this. And sometimes you have to hear it, you know, eight ways, eight different times, like different teachers in school, like where somebody explains it and like, finally it sinks in. And yeah. frankly, like, you know, before the show came on, we were talking about my new food sensitivity tests and how I'm navigating some of my food sensitivities. But, you know, I shop at Kroger, I shop at Publix, I shop at Sprouts and Whole Foods. So <laughs> depending on my mood of the day, like something is going to resonate with me um and give me choices so variety is the spice of life so while the caregiver warrior and happy healthy caregiver and sustainable caregiving and all of these folks we all are a lot of us are talking about self-care it's important i think to have it in this quantity of messages so that it you find the the, the messages that are going to resonate with you you find the people that are going to resonate with you and if we're all saying it maybe there's something to this like <laughs> Uh, it needs to be talked about. Yeah, and we're um, saying it, saying it in different voices too. I mean, like you know, our, our particular group of of, of um, warriors. Um, you know, we all have different lanes. You know, like we all have a different wheelhouse, kind of, which is I think why, you know, we all get along. And I think it's really needed in the caregiving space because just like there's, you know, everybody's unique and individual. You know, yeah, I agree. The message has to be hit home, and I think people hear things differently. Like they need different things. You know, mm -hmm. um, and I, I just, there's just such a need in it. And it's, and it's like, I'm, you know, caregivers are silent a lot of the time. That's the thing that's, you know, it's really hard to tell sometimes, but I just see more responding. Like there's more, like I see in like, say in my social media or whatever, it's growing. It's not this, our, our audience and, the, and, and caregivers in general, it's exploding. I yes. Mean. And they're getting younger. And I think maybe that's why they feel potentially more comfortable speaking up and standing up is that it's kind of the environment right now. It's like stand up for what you believe in and get your story out there and advocate for it. Um, and so it is there are some lots of good things to say. Well, I jumped ahead and we didn't pick anything from the Happy Healthy Caregiver Jar. And we have to do that because that's we how we kick off these shows. So this one, Suzanne says strength also looks like stopping to nurture nourish restore and align yourself and this is from lala delia is her name but strength uh, um, looks like stopping to nurture nourish restore and align yourself wow. I, I felt like that was that's a good one for the caregiver warrior too because you know i i think sometimes we think strength is kind of like just push through it just just get it done and and 
you know? <laughs> yeah. And you know, and it's so funny because, and this is why you and I connect so well, because there's sort of like this universal thing. One of the things I'm really thinking about, and I'm actually writing a blog on it, is vulnerability. It's strength. Know? Which is strength, you know, but we caregivers, you know, we just were so afraid to be vulnerable. I mean, there's so many good reasons for that, you know, like, you know, but for me, I mean, I always have a problem being vulnerable anyway, all my life, no matter what <laughs> it was. And then when I was a caregiver, you know, like I, yeah, I had to be really strong and I had to do it all and I had to control it all and I had to fix it all and I had to make it happen now, you know, and it's, <laughs> you know, and when I got, when I let myself be vulnerable, not only was it better for my parents, cause I wasn't like on them, you know, um, I got help. Like I was able, like, it was so amazing. And i see, as I'm talking about this memories come up, you know, I would like, my mom would see, you know, my mom was some, sometimes like in, in certain stages of her dementia, you know, you wouldn't think she could connect with me in certain areas, but like, all I had to do is say, oh, mommy, I'm so tired today. And she'd go, oh, you know why? You know, it's because you're working so hard taking care of us. And I mean, we would, would start off this incredible conversation mm. with the one person that I was so afraid to to show that I was afraid or tired. You know, like yeah, I, we I, think it's a weakness. It's it's right. a, it's a strength. And you know, I used to. I I think we all kind of struggle that with that a little bit in our caregiving journey is like being vulnerable. And then I would finally dawned on me that you know the more transparent I am, the more clearly I see myself. And as a form of advocacy, that story sharing is it gives faces to these 53 million family caregivers. We're not just, you know, a number. We're, you know, Suzanne and Elizabeth and, you know, Heather and Julie and, and James and Bruce. Like it's it's so important to give these stories a face. Otherwise, it just gets kind of lost. Um, and the, and we do have to be vulnerable. We have to be vulnerable if we want more help. You know, I think you know a lot of the folks that I coach. It's like I need more help. But have you asked? Have you asked for it? Have you have you inquired? You know, oh, I just feel like they should know. They can't. They don't. The people yes. are busy. They're running a million miles an hour. They they think you've got it. Yeah, because that's what you're presenting to them. You yes. know what I mean? And and of course, you know, they can't read your mind. I mean, no. you know, like, oh, gee, you know, people don't can't read your mind. That is not that, isn't that amazing. And then, yeah, that, you know, that, I mean, so often I had people say to me when I finally said, hey, you know, could you help me with this? And, oh, they were so relieved. You know, like I had this picture of people waiting in the wings, but I wasn't not that I wasn't aware of it, but they were like, like, we didn't know how to help you. We were afraid to ask you because you go, no, I'm fine. No, I'm fine. You know what I mean? And I wasn't fine we know you know we're, we're never fine we're never fine is not a feeling like first <laughs> no, of all so like no. it's trip, a gravestone you know i'm fine like that was gonna be my grave so she like, lived she lived fine i'm fine Just she fine. was fine you know yeah. you know oh god i know, I know. So it's that, it's dangerous it's dangerous, it dangerous. to re repress these feelings yeah. because they will creep up in other ways and that was kind of the you know again back to this food sensitivity is like i was in this exploratory thing of like something's going on my body's trying to tell me something and i didn't feel bad necessarily um and and you can, I think, go through your life like that in caregiving, where you're just kind of going on to the next task. And I remember even saying something to my sister when she was caregiving for my mom, and she admitted, she said, I like to be productive and just to keep doing. I feel like if I stop and reflect, I'm just going to unravel. Right. And and then what happens? Like, I, I'm afraid of that. Um, and so we do and have to have really, the space spaces. Yes. That's a really good point. That was another thing that I was thinking about recently because, you know, um, yes, I think that, you know, we, we, and we do it with the best intentions, but we tell caregivers to pause and to sort of sit and reflect, you know what I mean? Like that. And that is extremely helpful. It really helped me like on my shoulders here, you know, like it really helps me to sort of see what's going on. But I realized that just like your sister, a lot of people are afraid, you know, like when they do sit and all these feelings start coming up, you know, it can be like a major panic attack. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm, I'm prone to anxiety, as you know. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's Same, like, yeah, yeah, you know, so, you know, so there's a, there's a, I think as we tell everybody to sit and pause and meditate, you know, you have to also couple that with 
you know, your feelings are normal. Big feelings are normal. You know, there's a healthy way to process them, you know, share them, you know, like to sort of help caregivers so that they're not afraid to stop and be vulnerable and sit still for a minute. That's right. Yeah, I I feel like, you know, you say take your emotional temperature every day. We take everyone else's temperature, right? Like, oh, hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling? You know, and, and you know, how to even name the word. Like, I've been thinking about, you know, that chart that's like all the different faces and it's yes. like, am I angry? Am I tired? Am I bored? Am I this? Am I that? And I'm really, you know, sometimes I struggle to sit and be like, how am I feeling? How am I really feeling? Um, today, it, it can be tough. Um, and then the caregiver warrior, Suzanne is there to kind of just you, you make it okay. It's okay to have these. They're not all great feelings. No, no, quite often, they're not great feelings. But yeah, it is okay. You know, and I and I the only reason I keep driving that home because it wasn't okay for me, you know, like all my life. You know, like what, I what do you what do you mean by that? Like, did someone well, say something to you? Did they? Well, I, I yeah, I think that you know we weren't allowed to get angry. We weren't allowed to you know we didn't talk about feelings a lot. You know, I think some of that was generational. You know, I think my parents were of the um, greatest generation, and I think you know very stoic and World War II hero. You know, stuff like that. So, um, and just to make sure we were safe, so we weren't. We, I lived in a house where people got angry, but it wasn't, it wasn't processed properly. You know, my mom got really angry a lot. So it wasn't really processed and we couldn't get angry as kids. So I think I was sort of told or taught or came up with the fact that I had to sort of stuff my feelings and it wasn't safe, you know? And, um, you know, I had to relearn that. I, and, and especially in caregiving, because there's an undercurrent of huge feelings that are running all the time. You know, anger, like big ones, like anger and guilt. I mean, I, like- I'm picturing these asteroids like coming at us. Like, Oh my God, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. and they come up so, you know what I mean? And like trauma and like fear. I mean, it's just a, you know, it's like a minefield. And I, I think you have to, anyway, for me, I had to learn that I wasn't gonna die you know, if I sort of poked around and in, in, in my fear and my anger and my guilt, you know, mm -hmm. that it's okay to have those feelings. For some reason, caregivers really take on a burden of having to be perfect and, you know, no mistakes and strong and tireless and, you know, all this stuff. And it's done with love and good intentions, but it's impossible. You know, so, like yeah. I made so many mistakes. You can't bootstrap caregiving. You can't just like pull up your bootstraps and, you know, get through it on your own and, and, and carry all this baggage on top through this thick mud. And, you know, that's, we, we need, we need it. And as you're talking and you're talking about how you were raised, I'm sitting here reflecting on how I was raised, you know, as one of six kids. And I don't ever remember my parents ever like saying, how do you feel about that, Elizabeth? How are you feeling today? I'm, I'm pretty sure they never said that. And the, wasn't necessarily like toxic positivity. You hear about that, but it was just, there was a lot going on and everybody had this expectation of you got to own your stuff and you got to, you got to move yourself forward. We're going to be here if you, if you need us, yes. but we're not going to like, you know, percolate on stuff very long. It's like, you're going to have to figure this out. Yes. And <laughs> so. I think, and, 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 you know, and, you know, and, and, and it's like always the character defects or character survival mechanisms. I mean, that's good. I mean, it get, you know, I mean, you and I are business women and we're, you know, I mean, we get on with it and we you know, no matter, even if working with anxiety, you know, we, we get, get things done. And I mean, I think that's the good side of it. However, you know, it's also like, you know, to feel feelings and feel shame around feeling feelings. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of shame attached to having big feelings or being upset or worried as caregivers. I think there's shame attached to that. And that's really dangerous also. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, it's because it's, we know where we don't allow, if, if my mom or dad or other family members that I cared for, if they were start crying or they would be upset or they would be fearful. 
oh my God, I would, my heart would break and I would do everything I could to console them. However, I wouldn't let myself mm. like cry or, you know, say, oh my God, you know what I mean? Like I would do it alone and, but then I would feel guilty or shameful about, around it, that I wasn't a good caregiver or there was something wrong with me it's or I wasn't a, a good person. You're a human. We're human. Humans. We're yes. human, you know? And I think that, and, and very so empathetic, that's... compassionate humans at that. So of course we're going to feel that we're caregivers. Like we, we take we take all that on. We're built um, that way. We are built that way. Uh, yeah. And so I, I think it's important, Suzanne, that 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 message is starting to come come through. I'm curious. Like you mentioned, your anxiety. I have generalized anxiety. What is your coping strategies? What you know? Huh. What what when these things start bubbling up for you? What is the self-talk? What are the activities that you do to kind of diffuse? I, you know, I, I, I laugh only because like, I have like 50 of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's like good. A, you got like a toolbox. I have a big toolbox, you know what I mean? Because, you know, 49 of them aren't going to work. You know what I mean? So, I mean, and that's what people have to understand. Like, like, like people feel like they have to manage their anxiety. Like I, I admit, I, I know now, like I'm always going to have it. It's, if it's one of my friends, I'm just going to be here. So I do everything from meditate to I'll do like, you know, deep breathing. Um, you know, I'll do like a double inhale. That sort of slows your heart down. I'll do, you know, the four count breathing, which they do in the army, you know, when you're, you know, four in, four, you know, four in, hold, four out. You know, I mean, I will try breathing exercises. I, I tr you know, the basics for me are, which is why I was so interested in your diet is if I'm eating right, when I'm mm. getting enough sleep, you know, when I'm doing things I love, like as part of my day, that sort of sets me up so it's not as often. But if I get triggered, like I got triggered yesterday, like just on the, on the silliest thing, but it's not silly. See, and there's the shame around it. It's not silly, yeah. something triggered me, okay? So, and I had to do everything. I had to go take a walk, I had to exercise. Um, I got a healthy drink. Um, I started breathing. I started telling myself I'm safe. I'm a good person. It's going to be okay. I'm a survivor. I started that language. I started to meditate for a couple minutes. So, you know, and it wasn't real pretty for a good part of the day. I think I burst into tears at one point. Um, I shared it. Oh my gosh, I shared it. Um, and, you know, eventually I was able to sleep and it was going to be okay. And here's a new day. But um, I just, you know, whatever gets you through the night, all right, all right. You know, you just got to, you just got to keep doing it. And it does pass. And I have to remind myself, as I'm sure you do, I've survived this before. Yes, that's a great point. Look at all these anxious moments I've had in my, you know, decades of life. Like you've gotten through these you've survived them. They've informed how you move forward. You've learned new tools, you know what works. And sometimes it does take multiple things to do that. So I think um, that's a good point. Look at what you've already been through. Right. And you know, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it's just a snarky, uncomfortable day or moment or whatever. I mean, I'm so much better than I used to be, but you know, and it's, I just, you will survive it, you know, and you will find you will, you'll, It'll, you'll add it will add to your survival mechanisms you know mm. um and i i i i feel very grateful that i can remember that that i survived this i survived this you know and um and then yeah. sometimes you do just have to give yourself some time time out like i'll tell my husband like i don't even want to be in my own skin today or i just kind of like you might want to stay clear of me i'm a uh, you know i'm i'm close to exploding here or but see, whatever. And that self-awareness, that's brilliant because that's one of the healthiest ways I believe you can sit with anxiety or, or anything really, but that's brilliant because you feel it. You're, you're, it, you, when the alarm bells go off, you're aware, you're self-aware, and then you share it. So it diffuses, you know, what could be a really you name it. Yeah. Yeah, if you name it, if you and mm. name it and name it out loud and share it, it can really stop. It can really prevent really uncomfortable moments in the relationships with yourself and other people. 
I agree. I agree. And with other women, you know, I think sometimes too, it's like women, we look at other women and we think, oh gosh, they look like they have it all together. It's like, no, that's, that's what we want you to see, you know, on the outside, but there's real stuff happening in everybody's life. Um, and maybe they're not ready to put it all out there on social media or they're working through it themselves and, and processing it. And that's where the journaling and the, and the quiet reflection and the meditation, like all of those things kind of help with the processing. And then we can kind of package it and say, hey, this, this, this was helpful to me. Maybe this will help, help you. And um, you know, I, pre I appreciate that about you, that you, that you put that out there. Um, and you, you do talk about like how relief comes from all the self, the self-awareness, the self-love, the self-care, you know, self-care gets kind of a bad rap lately. Um, what are your thoughts on that? It, like, well, I just, you know, just, I, I just wrote a book about, and it's called <laughs> self-care for caregivers, you know, and it was really interesting because uh, Adams Media came to me and they wanted me to write this book. And it's sort of a, and we'll, we'll talk about it for a minute. It's sort you know, it's it's like 140 tips and strategies for self-care. But more importantly for me, and it's in four areas, it's like, you know, emotional, physical, soul, spirit, and actual the practical side of caregiving. And for me, it's there's actual tips, you know, do mm -hmm. these breathing exercises, perhaps meditate, talk to your siblings, communicate more. It's you know, it's an easy read, you just pick it up, you can start anywhere. But for me, it's also a mindset. You know, in other words, these put you sort of in a mindset of prioritizing yourself. And, and that's the big message for me. You know, if it's okay to think of yourself first, like if you don't do that, you're going to get sick and, and hit the wall, then who's going to take care of them? It's like, we got to stop the stigma of I'm being selfish. <laughs> You know, no, you know. Because you're taking care of your own health and happiness. Like, I think that's one of the greatest gifts you can give your yourself, your family, your society, your healthcare. So, like, we're not gonna have to like pay for your, you know, your society is not even have to pay for your future health, chronic concerns and stuff. Like, look at it on a bigger scale and step back and say like, how, what a ripple effect your health and happiness has on every part of your life. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I was a better, when I, look, when you're rested and you, you grab a snack or, you know, you take some quiet moments, you're a nicer caregiver, you know, and, and a more resilient one. Like I had so much more patience when I was doing things in my life that fulfilled me. I, I could be so much more patient with my parents. I mean, mm. If, if, if I was constantly folk and they were happier too, you know, like they want to be, I, why should I be snarky around them? Cause I don't feel good or I'm tense. Like, you know, tone of voice was really important for my mom. Mm -hmm. Like I finally got that message. Respect. You must respect, respect her. Respect mm -hmm. and tone of voice. Like, I wish I had known that when I was a teenager with her, she really had anxiety. I think that was with the dementia it was just a nightmare for her. But so in just my tone of voice, when I was able to be softer, mm. you know, and say like, what did you say, mom? Or, you know, like, cause it didn't matter. She didn't really understand what I was saying to her at one point, but she heard my tone of voice. And I couldn't find that tone of voice unless I felt okay, or I at least kind of felt okay. Like I was kind of rested and I wasn't hangry, you know, yeah. or I wasn't tired or lonely. You know what I mean? It was easier for me to be softer with her. And then it, it, it was amazing the change in her when I could be soft and gentle. Yeah, I've noticed even just like a change with my brother. You know, we used to, my now that my parents are deceased, my siblings and I, we have to share the care for my older brother, Tom, who's developed me, has an intellectual and developmental disability. And, you know, we used to just kind of like combat, you know, like, everything pick pick what he was doing what he was not doing this and that and now i've just like really started like asking him questions and listening about like things in his life and asking more about his hobbies tell me more about that like oh. answering his phone call you know there are times where there are there are inopportune times where he calls and he calls repeatedly back to back but if i can answer it i will because he just is lonely you know and he's He's just wants to kind of like see me make my salad at lunch or whatever it is. So he's right. um, 
it, but it, it is how you, you know, we can't control and he's not perfect all the time. He is very, he's got a lot of behavioral things and he's angry. You know, he's a 59 year old angry man because he's, he's lived with these disabilities his whole life and things haven't been easy for him. Mm -hmm. um, but he is, you know, he does have a lot of joy in his life too. Uh, and we, we can, we can help that, you know, with, with the, the kids, uh, and I've just I've enjoyed like our, the nurturing, the relationship with him, like That's we can, we can control our behavior. Sometimes he still gets combative and angry. That's what I started to say. And then I'm like, Hey, um, Tom, maybe we should talk at another time. Like I can see you've got, you know, stuff going on that you need to kind of work out. And I'm not yelling at him. Like before I'd be like, don't act you know, don't act this way. And then I'm turning into a person I don't want to want to see. So yeah. it's, uh, it's interesting. Maybe we're just maturing in our caregiving world. Well, We've been I, doing yeah, this I a think, while. <laughs> yes, I agree. And I, I think we're learning and I think, and, and see, and here's the thing, because I remember when, when I, when I found, um, you know, uh, whatever you say, mom, I mean, I remember when it, that flew out of my mouth once and yeah. I was like, wow, that's, you know, that was have it your really way. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're like, oh, okay, mom, whatever you say. And I saw it and, and bam, it was like immediate. She was like, oh, 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 okay. And completely calmed down and left the room. And I thought, whoa. And I think because just like you, we're, we're always looking. We're certain we, we want to do, we want to find those kind of answers that are so simple, but so complicated. Like, like it was such an easy thing. And I use it for the rest of my caregiving with her. Like, you know, whatever you say, mom. And it worked every single time. Um, and I thought, why didn't I think of that before? But I was looking for it. And because mm. I was looking for it, you know, whatever you believe in, you know, it just came out of me. Uh, and I think that's what happens. I think we, I think we're on this journey to, to make it easier for those we love and for ourselves. You know, we just, and I, I love the phrase, we're just walking each other home. You know, I mean, we're really, caregivers really want to do that so I think you were looking for that with your brother and I and I I give you I give you I congratulate you on that because uh, thank you, you know it's well it's true though you know you're actively looking and I I think and I think caregivers you know are hardwired to do that so I think mm -hmm. if if you know we're looking and we become self-aware you know we're going to stumble on good stuff <laughs> you know it's a lot of trial and error so if we can uh, find something that and if it, we see this stuff that doesn't work, and I remember Tifa Snow talking about that, she's like, you know, you you keep managing a situation this way and you drive into the ditch. Like, at what point are you going to be like, I don't want to drive in that ditch anymore. Like, let me let me think of some other way. And okay. I'm just curious, Suzanne, has like, like self-care has evolved for me since 2014 when I was on, you know, started this journey back when I was doing 100 days of healthy on Instagram. Um, you know, I was very focused at the time on physical self care, on eating right and exercising and sleeping. Um, and it has evolved for me over the years. Has it evolved for you? You know, it's it has in certain ways. I mean, I'm gone. You know, I'm I'm facing a lot of change right now in my life, probably more than I have in around thirty years. So. <laughs> It's really interesting, and it has it evolved in that. Um, here's what is here's how it's evolved. It's evolved in that I can't find the answer right now. <laughs> like I can't, like I don't know what the answer is. I can't find it, and I have more like you know struggle days than I do like joyful days. Um, so I'm really challenged right now. But what I have learned is that that's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm not going to die, <laughs> you know, like, I, you know, like all my life, I analyzed everything and I, you know, it just doesn't work. It's just not working anymore. So, and I, and I don't have the answers and I'm really challenged, but the, I think the difference for me is, is that the, the contest is over. <laughs> the competition is over. Like I don't have to win, you know, there's no winning here. It's just, wow. You know, try to find the happy place. You know, I can't mm -hmm. find it right now. But, you know, I think the universe will help me and it's okay. And I, I'm getting better with feeling that it's going to, that it's okay to not be okay. Yes, definitely is. Tell us, tell us more about your book. Like what, 
what um, you talked, you touched on it a little bit. I want to know when it's coming out. How do I get a hold of it? What, what, what can I expect to read? And you mentioned there's over 140 tips. Do they take hours to do these self care things? No, it's all kinds <laughs> of things, and, and it's everything from my, my toolbox and more. You know, um, you know, it's going to be great. Um, it's coming out September 6th, which I'm really excited about. And um, you can go to my website, caregiverwarrior.com, and actually pre-order. You can do that through my website. And I'm really proud of it because it's, um, you know, it's not something that, you, you know, because caregivers don't have time. Like, you know, like when can you sit down and read a book, if, you know? So you can actually like look it up and look at a page like, oh, let me try this today or let me try. So that's what I feel really good about is that's uh, 140 different kinds of strategy um, strategies that you can pick up. And it's stuff that I just found that worked for me. And that I found that if it wouldn't work, I could try another different version of it. <laughs> yeah. I mean? Flip another page, try Flip that one. another page, you know, and maybe we concentrate on the physical today and maybe the spiritual today. And maybe like, you know, make sure you have a grab bag by the front door for the emergency room. I mean, just things, mm. you know, that you we can sort of use and have in our toolbox to just prioritize us. That's the message. The main message is, it's okay to prioritize your needs, you know? Yeah. It's okay. And it's okay not to be okay. Try this. What are, what are some things that you're excited about? Um, you know, now that the book is kind of behind you, what, what's, what's next for Caregiver Warrior and Suzanne? Other, then I'm sure you're marketing this book a lot, but. Well, uh, you know, so yes, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, get it to, cause you know, you and I want to save one caregiver at a time and that's really really, we, I know we both, we all really mean that. Um, I, yes, I, well, there's another book that I've, <laughs> I think there's another book in the work, so I, I can't believe I'm saying. Um, and I really want to take an opportunity to do more of this. I, I want to do more speaking. Mm -hmm. I want to get out there. And now that we can get out there, I know you're starting to do a lot of those speaking, which is great because we can do it now. We can get out. And I want to be more hands-on with people. I want to I want to see them spend one-on-one -on -one time with them more and um, just really, really get the word out that, you know, if you have any, if you're hysterical, it's historical. So <laughs> if you're bringing baggage to your, your caregiving, you know, you got to be self-aware and it's okay. It's okay to deal with all this stuff. I think that's the, that's the message that I'm, you know, I'm starting to drill down on the message. Um, so, so yeah. Good. I, and I think that the, going back to the speaking part, like it is something that I think our world is ready to receive it more so maybe than when we started. What you'd mentioned, like we want to help one caregiver at a time. But what I like about the speaking thing too is like it's it's scalable. You know, like it's a way to 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 get a group together and then have some connections form. Like a lot of the speaking that I do is with employee resource groups. Awesome. And what I love about that is that they have support right at their fingertips as working family caregivers with their affinity or their employee resource groups that are for women or caregivers, um, because that's a great way to they get the resources, they get some information, but then it's those discussions at the water cooler, it's the little Slack messages that happen between work where somebody's gonna get it and, yeah. and keep the conversation going. And that jazzes me up. Yeah, I, it's amazing because that could be cause, you know, what are the stats of people who are working full-time jobs, do we know? Um, I think at one point I saw 60, it's 60% 60 of the, either the workforce are working family caregivers or 60% of the 53 million are working family caregivers. It's unbelievable. And it's I, a lot. I, I, it's a lot, you know, and, and I applaud companies that are doing this because I think it's, I think it's just amazing, you know, that, that they're supporting their workers because, you know, they're going to get better employees, you know. If they get support, it, everybody's going to really be taken care of. And I think that's extremely important. And yeah, and I, I really want to get the message out that, you know, especially like my wheelhouse is the emotional state you're in, you know, like take your emotional temperature. I mean, I really, my, my caregiving, caregiving my parents changed my life. And with all the therapy I've had, and I know I've spoken to you about this before, you know, I'm sober 36 years, all the work I've done with that and recovery, which I'm so grateful and blessed, all of that 
it was nothing compared to what I went through in taking care of my family members or or pe- or if people take care of people that remind them of their family members you know that emotional upheaval and change um you know and I mentioned this in the, in the book quite often it's it's that did more for me in my life and made me a better me period i had to bring my best self to the table my parents weren't going to change i had to yeah so you know, I I had to really I had to look at my behavior in my life like big, big. I had to look at it and make whatever changes I could on whatever scale I could. Well, it's particularly when you're talking about like with addiction, like that's a coping mechanism that you had, you know, that was a habit, and that's a huge, a huge thing to get your arms around. And we just kind of you know, mentioned, and I know you did talk more about that, so we'll link to episode fifty five. Um, and you also talk about what it was like to care for a difficult person. Um, not everyone's lovely to take care of. Some people are just snotty people. Um, and, and it's, it's hard. It makes it a hard job even harder. And so then you really got to like tap into joy someplace else and really. Well, yes. And, and if you work through it, this is the another real message is if you work through it, wow, there is gold at the end of the rainbow. I mean, now I you're work, like, where are they? Bring them, bring them my way. Bring them on, you know, because <laughs> it's, you know, it's a big lesson, you know, and I broke through a lot of anger and resentment with my mom. I mean, I healed my relationship with my mom. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had such peace when she passed and, you know, she told me on her deathbed that I was such a good girl. And I mean, it was just, it was unbelievable. So, you know, if you can buck it up, you know, I mean, and look at yourself and what you're doing and not really, you know, it's amazing. It ain't easy. No, no. Cause I imagine like her behavior likely didn't change. I, that's not true. And I'll oh, tell she you, did. it did. Uh, it did. When my behavior changed and I got softer, she got soft. Okay. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I thought of, now she did have dementia. Um, uh, you know, which I, you know, is another complication perhaps, or another aspect of it all, but absolutely when I got better and I got more balanced and I got more compassionate, she felt better and she mirrored me. I love that. <sighs> See, there's hope that gives people hope listening that are like, oh, maybe there's finally something that we can try. All right, Suzanne, this is your second time. I don't, I'm pretty sure we did the lightning round back then, but um, did. the lightning round for this daily self-care journal, I'm, I don't know if I have the same prompts or different prompts, but. Um, <laughs> Which is did, an amazing journal, by the way. Uh, Everybody needs to have that on their bedside. You. Thank you. Uh, so here's the first one. It says, describe a moment in time where you took a leap of faith. How did it turn out? You might be doing that right now, I think. Yes, I'm doing it right <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm taking a huge leap of faith right now. Um, and um, uh, in my really good moments, I'm like, wow, this is really good because I'm getting so much better in my life. But, you know, it's really painful. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing things differently. And that's how you grow is by doing things differently. My, my life has changed. And you can do it at any age. Any age, girlfriend. Any age. Even, even, at, even at 49. <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than you then. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite prayer or a phrase that makes you feel calm? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things that I can but the wisdom to know the difference. Yes, that is a that is one of my bookends to it's particularly the hard day um, is is to say the serenity prayer. I love it. And what's most meaningful to you right now? What's most meaningful to me right now? The people I love, telling them that I love them. Um appreciating them that I still have them and they're they're people are everybody's relatively healthy and I'm relatively healthy it's yeah those are those are big gratitude points um these days 
And then what, last question, what makes you feel nurtured, pampered, or just plain good? Being around horses. Oh, you still, then we talked about that, the first one. So horses is still one of your jams. I love horses, it. Horses, I'm, you know, and if you're a horse girl, you understand this, but you know, the, there's nothing like the smell of horse poop. My you know, girlfriend it's, it's, just moved out of the suburb. She and her husband bought a farm um, with her horse Briscoe and her donkey Sid. Her donkey Sid, I love it. I know. You know, I'm in New York, so and I don't get to see uh, Scooby Doo that often, uh, just because my schedule. But you know, we have horses in Central Park. You know, so when I walk on Central Park, you know, I, I walk a lot because that really helps me. Um, I walk a lot, and just you know, there's the horse. Oh yes, the hay, you know, and then then they're there. Yeah, so they it's it's a nice, it's a happy place. Yeah, it's good. Maybe you need a scratch and sniff of hay or, <laughs> or horse manure. <laughs> like, oh, you know, bring, we can make some money on that. Hey, we got to talk about that offline. <laughs> bring bring <laughs> some some happy place on that. So <laughs> that could be like the whiteout of entrepreneurs. Of <laughs> <laughs> what, whatever your thing is, yeah, to bring you back. What mm. is there anything else that you want to add, Suzanne? Uh, parting words of wisdom for caregivers. Just no, just thank you for having me. And, and, you know, I hope my, you find self-care for caregivers helpful. And please let me know, you know, just, 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 just please be kind to yourself. I mean, that's, you know, just be kind to yourself. It's okay. It's, you're doing great. You're doing great. It doesn't, you know, even if you're, you know, knee, knee deep in alligators, you know, and, and cleaning up the bathroom, you know what I mean? You're great. You're doing great. Mm. And then how do people stay in touch with you? Caregiverwarrior.com. Go on my website. Um, tweet back at me. I love when people tweet back at me. Um, yeah, just just get more Instagram me. videos I've been seeing my, lately. Too. More Instagram videos because I'm getting someone to help me. I, <laughs> Neo in England is helping me with that. Awesome. <laughs> she's great. Yeah, she's really great. They're she's great. Helping me. And it's I'm another being good, like see him doing reels, you know, like I found a really good filter. <laughs> no, and it's so good. I mean, it's like just your your warrior tips um, of the day, your weapon of the day. They're yeah, they're Thanks. great. Every we Thanks. need we need that affirmation. It's you know, similar to the caregiver jar, you've got those and it's yes, we can it's it's there's the lots same of room thing. for affirmation. Absolutely. And don't you do the same thing? Like I you know, like you know, gosh, gosh bless people who can buffer and do like 14 of them. I do that every morning. So whatever you hear, see me say, that's what I need to hear that day. That's what I'm going through. And I'm sure it's the same thing with you. Like, you, oh my gosh, and you'll put that down, right? Yep, yep. So good. So Suzanne, good. thank you so much. I look oh. forward to reading your book and sharing it. And oh, uh, I appreciate you. So much, you. Pal. I appreciate you so much. I'm so happy we connected back in the day. And, and this has been a great journey with you. You know, I, 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 I just love you to death. Huh. Likewise. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs>